we are confined to our homes at the moment and locked down <laughs> to the four walls of our garden. It's quite taxing on everyone. We were about 10 or 11 days in now, lost count. But anyway, what I did is I went through my freezer and I discovered that I had a beautiful uh, Hilbeck that we'd caught off the boat in the dark. We couldn't film it because we didn't have the equipment to film in the dark. And uh, there's nothing better to make with a piece of frozen Hilbeck than uh, Easter time Cape Malay pickled fish. This is the long Easter weekend coming up. So I thought it'd be nice to show you guys my recipe for uh, pickled fish, Cape Malay style pickled fish. I learned this recipe a long time ago. Done a few tweaks here and there. I'd like to say I've perfected it, but you know what? It's like fishing. You're never quite perfect at fishing. You're never quite perfect at cooking. You just do it the way you know. So anyway, so what I've got in front of me here, two onions that I'm going to slice, thumb size knob of ginger, fresh ginger, and I've got three large garlic cloves. And then I have some, uh, about a teaspoon of Himalayan rock salt, two tablespoons of mild curry powder. I have a tablespoon of turmeric, a teaspoon of cinnamon powder. In there I've got some cumin seeds, some red peppercorns, some um, allspice berries. And at the bottom there, I have a teaspoon of uh, mustard seeds and also a teaspoon of coriander seeds. Then I've got four or five, actually it's probably about six bay leaves and a little bit of olive oil. And what we're going to do with that, we're going to make the sauce that's going to go over our fish. So this is the Cape Malay style sauce. I didn't mention that I also use some white grape vinegar. I don't use acetic vinegar, it's a grape vinegar. And I prefer the white. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and chop the onions quickly. We don't chop them, we just slice them because we want the, the slices. Then we have a knob of ginger. Now, I find the best way to do this, uh, most people will grate that. I'll take my knife, put it on there, flatten it, and then just give it a few run-throughs with a knife. And you've got perfectly and very quickly chopped ginger. And tell me you haven't seen that trick before. Same thing with the garlic cloves, just a knife on top, just a hit on the hand to get it crushed and then you just run through it with a knife. There we go, we've got the good ginger and the garlic mixed up, just going to give it a run through again and that's it, nice and rustic. Let's get the heat up here and we're going to use a little bit of olive oil in, the, in this cooking process. This is about four tablespoons of olive oil. It's gonna go in there, get that up to heat. And now the secret with the spices is to actually cook your whole spices first. The mustard seeds that are in there, the coriander, the peppercorns, the allspice berries, those will all kind of crack open and pop and release all the flavors as they go. So we're gonna put those in as soon as the oil's up to heat. If you give it a second, you'll actually start hearing the mustard seeds start popping. Oh, and I forgot to mention there's four cloves in here. I put four cloves in, not more than four cloves. Those are very strong and overpowering. But just four little cloves, five or six berries, allspice berries, and the rest are already gone through. You can actually start smelling those coming through now. Our seeds are ready there, they're popping away. Now we're going to chuck in those sliced onions, and as I break them, I'm just going to break them apart. Okay, and we're going to let those onions cook off, turn down the heat, and we're basically going to sweat the onions down until they go translucent. At this stage, we don't put in the, the garlic and the ginger, because we don't want the garlic to burn. If the garlic burns on the bottom, it gets bitter. So only about halfway through the, through the onions cooking do we put that in. Okay, and one thing I left out, was my sugar. So my syrup, I'm going to be basically making this into a syrup with the vinegar. So the vinegar and the sugar combined will cook down and make a syrup with all those Cape Malay flavors. And that's going to go over our fish. In the meantime, while that's busy cooking down, what I have here is a uh, bowl of flour, which I've just basically put salt and pepper into. And I've cut my, um, my Hilbeck into small, smaller chunks. I'm just going to toss them into this flour. Close the lid. And then give it a shake. And what that's going to do is this flour is then going to coat each of those little pieces of the fish. And when we're ready to cook those, we're just going to put those into a shallow fry of oil. 
in a, in a thick bottom pan so it doesn't lose its heat and get those golden brown and then we're going to pack them out into a dish like that or any dish you can use a tupperware with a lid that closes um, in this case i'm just going to pack them in here pull the sauce over it we're going to eat this um, over the next two days so there's no need to close it i'll just put a bit of cling film over it all right there we're about halfway through now you can see the onions are becoming translucent at this stage i've chucked in the, the bay leaves and now the ginger and garlic goes in Gonna leave that for about five minutes, four to five minutes. Now I'm gonna put in those uh, the curry powder, the turmeric, and the uh, cinnamon, and then I'm gonna allow that to actually cook. So I'm gonna stir it through, but I don't want it to burn. So I'm gonna have to keep it moving. So I want these spices to cook, to cook through. You don't have raw spices at the end. So we're gonna allow these to actually. Almost, they start grabbing on the bottom a little. And turn your heat down a little bit so you don't get it, so it doesn't burn, it just cooks. There you go, you can see the, the and all the curry powders and turmeric coming through there. Okay, so about two or three minutes, you're just gonna get that spice cooked. And then we're gonna put in about a cup of grape vinegar. So I'm gonna put in about a cup of vinegar. Turn the heat up. And that's about a cup. You can actually see the colors all combining now. It's starting to look really nice. And the reason I'm stirring it is because when I put those spices and they started just grabbing onto the bottom a little bit as they were cooking in. And all I'm doing with my spoon is just making sure that there's nothing left on the bottom. So all the flavor in that layer against the base of the pot that's where all the flavor is really all those all the goodness and the fried onions stuck to it and you can deglaze that like this you're adding so much flavor to this okay once this comes up to a kind of a, a rolling bubble or oil we're going to add that sugar now we're going to add that teaspoon of salt stir that through and then this is about half a cup of sugar so i'm going to put most of it in not all of it i go by feel <laughs> I don't measure things. We, all we're doing is we're creating a sweet and sour and hot and spicy gravy or syrup. And obviously the more sugar you put, the more you break down that vinegar and you get a more rounded flavor. But if you overdo it, then it's just a sweet flavor. So nothing more than about half a cup. Okay, we're going to turn that right down. We're going to close it. I'm going to leave that to simmer on the side. We've got the um, sauce busy simmering, so what we're going to do now is we're going to get the fish ready. So we're going to basically just shallow fry it in some canola oil, not too much. Just so you've got to give it a little bit of a, it's got to have a little bit of depth so you can get that browning. Okay, as you can see from putting the, the pieces of fish inside the Tupperware with the flour and shaking it around, it actually coats them properly. So they're really well coated. And now those, that seals the fish off. You're ready to go in now. Let's go. There we go. Nice and hot. We're not going to put too many pieces in. I don't want to overshadow the pan. So probably six or eight pieces at a time if that fits. Or maybe less. Six looks like it's going to do it. About four minutes each side until it's browned. Like I said, I, I got lucky. I found some Hilbeck in my freezer. Got to, I, got, I keep a little bit of fish frozen. Um, sometimes you catch two and you only eat one. Keep it frozen. I vacuum pack it so that it prolongs its lifespan. Uh, vacuum packed or, or tightly cling wraps is your best way of preserving fish in the freezer. And then um, this recipe goes with anything. You could use hake. You can use uh, any fish actually, any white fish. Uh, um, yellowtail, like I said, hake. If you can get some hake from your convenience store, the ones that are operating during the lockdown. Um, you can use, you can even do it with bass if you've got, and you've got access to a bass dam. You can do it with any type of fish. There we go, those bits are looking really good. Okay, so we're going to put those into the dish. And we're going to pack them in layers. Our first layer will go in. Our sauce has been simmering now for about, probably 10 minutes. And by the time we finish with the fish, we'll be ready to pour that over that.
And the best thing about this pickled fish recipe is it's going to taste good today. Tomorrow it's going to taste great. But on Sunday, hmm, it's going to taste superb. And Monday it's still going to be good. You can keep this in your fridge for probably about, if you seal it in the top way in your fridge, probably two weeks, I'd say. Two weeks, three weeks. It's all cooked. Uh, the vinegar becomes a preservative, the vinegar in that syrup that we've made. And guys, there's so many different ways to keep yourself busy during lockdown. Tidy your tackle boxes, clean your rods, service your reels. It's actually been quite a good experience, this whole lockdown thing. You know, getting to know the kids more intimately. You know, you're, you're working every day of your life. You don't actually get to know them for this amount of time. So this is actually quite a blessing. We should take it. At, it's not a blessing because people are people are passing away and people are getting sick. You know, with everything that's bad, there's a good. And uh, some of this is good. There we go. That's the uh, the syrup that's done, ready to pour over all this delicious fish. Have a look at that. Doesn't that look superb? We're just going to pour it in here, Let's ladle it in, spoon it in. And we're going to leave that to cool down. Don't put it in the fridge until it's cooled down. If you're going to have it open like this, obviously wrap it in cling film. If you put it in the fridge before it's cool, it's liable to go sour before you can get to eat it. So it's got to cool down to room temperature before putting it in the fridge. Cape Malay style pickled Kielbeck. And Kielbeck, Kielbeck can be caught all over our coastline. Pretty much from the Tell all the way down to the Cape. In some places, Blake's Beach in the Cape, you can catch them from the beach. Um, in the Transcar, Mazeppa Bay, uh, Coffee Bay hole in the wall. You can catch them from the beach there. Occasionally we'll get one or two off the beach in the till, but most of them are caught from the boats, by commercials, as well as by recreationals. Um, straight by, you get some keel beer all over the place. You get a keel beer pretty much on all, the, on all the deep reefs at certain times of the year, and it's generally this time of the year, early or autumn and early winter, going through winter, you get the keel beer. And that's what you can do with a fieldback, but like I said, you can use any fish you have that's a flaky type of fish. Uh, tuna will work, but it wouldn't be my first choice, definitely not. But uh, tuna would definitely work. Guys, thanks for watching. Guys, hit us a like below. Make a comment. Tell us how your lockdown's going. Send us some videos, what you're doing in your lockdown to keep yourselves busy. Because I know our fishing brains get jammed when they've been away from the water for a day or more. And uh, it's going on 12 days now, so I'm suffering. And uh, I'm sure you guys are suffering too. So get, get some videos into us, send them to catchcock.com. Get, get onto the website on the top, it says submit videos, click on there and just follow the prompts. Let's get connected during this lockdown. Thanks for the support guys. Give us a thumbs up below if you, if you like this video and definitely just make a comment. Tell us what you want to see. I'm going to go and put this uh, in the kitchen to cool down. And then this on Sunday is going to be our lunch with some awesome salads we have 35,000 of you subscribers out there that are watching our channel on a daily basis and what we're appealing to you guys for is likes comments and shares we have uh, quite a few of our primal providers in lockdown on farms uh, myself with a dam in my in my backyard and we're able to punch out some some content for you guys to keep you entertained in this lockdown period if you guys would like to see that content we want to see you guys liking commenting and sharing on all our videos if we see the likes the comments and the shares start increasing we're going to punch out a video every single day to keep you guys entertained it's easy guys it takes five seconds get on the bottom of the video hit the share button and share it on all your platforms if we get 20,000 likes on our videos we will release one video every day of this lockdown so get liking guys get sharing and get liking guys i look forward to uh seeing some shares and making some content for you guys. Uh -huh.